In this video, I will be building the ESP Boy open source handheld game console. If you are unfamiliar with the project, you could learn more about it at this link below. Of course, the very first thing that we need to do before, before building it is making sure that we have all the necessary components that we need to build this kit. Now, depending on the version that you get, it might be different from what I will be showcasing here. Just be sure to check the latest instruction manual. So these are all the components that we need to build this kit. Also take note that depending on the version that you have, you may have more components or less components. Um, like for this one, for example, uh, some of the parts are already pre-soldered into the board, uh, so you don't have to do this. For example, these buttons come pre-soldered, but the instruction manual that I was following said that I have to solder them myself. So the first step that we need to do is to modify our charging module. The charging module should work as is, but if we want to prolong the life of our battery, we need to, to change the R3 resistor. As you can see on this table right here, uh, the resistor value that you will be using will depend on the battery capacity that you have. So I have a 500 mAh battery. A, a safe value is for me to half that. And using this table, I need to choose the resistor value that I need. Take note that the resistor that is included in the kit may be a bit larger than the space allotted for the R3 resistor. So just work around that. Uh, you could figure it out. To test, we will be using a multi-tester. And we just need to see if the output pins, as well as the bat, the B plus and B minus, and the out plus and out minus, are showing the correct results, which is should be around five volts. If you receive any weird values, then you might want to double check your connections. So the next step is for us to install our speaker. This is where you need to connect the speaker. And with this particular speaker, you, we may need to alter it a bit. So what we need to do is we need to dislodge this part of the pin so that we could extend it just like this. After that part, we need to also do the other one right here. Just be careful of pulling it and ex overextending it too much. You don't want to break the pins. Here I am, I'm trying to, uh, to determine the length that I want so I could cut the pins. So the next step is to just solder it to the pads. Check that everything is, is properly in place. And also make sure that the speaker remains flat. The reason for this is because another module will be sitting on top of this one. Next is we are going to install our ESP8266. The orientation that you need to follow is that the USB charger should be at the bottom and the Wi-Fi antenna should be at the top. As you can see right now, I'm just testing to see if they would fit properly. So this is how it would look like. I am adding some tape here at the bottom just so the, the headers would stay in place while I solder it. Because you don't want the headers to be moving around. Because if it does, it, it'll just lead to problems while you're soldering. There are different ways of holding this. This is just my preferred method. With that soldered, we now need to install it into our ESP Boy board. Once installed, this module should be flat on top of the board. 
the next step is for us to cut these pins right here. You can allow them to extend a bit, uh, but it would be better if you could make them shorter than the one that I'm doing right now. Later, I realized that it's actually better if it's if it's if they are more shorter, because the battery would be sitting uh, on top of these pins. The next step is to install our TFT display. You could see, and the TFT would sit here on top of the ESP8266. Unlike before though, soldering this is different this time around. We can't turn it around because behind the TFT pinholes, there is already something behind it. So we need to, to solder this at the front face. It shouldn't be too difficult. You just need to be careful. You don't want the soldering iron to touch the plastic part of the header. Put the TFT display here and then solder that in as well. Okay, so for the next one, we need to solder the charging module that we modified during the start of the video. And this charging module will sit on top of the speaker right here at the back of the board. The way this will go is that there are holes where you could place the pins and th these pins would be the support that would hold the charging module in place. Now this part is actually where I had a bit of trouble. If you are going to be soldering it and you don't have it properly in place, it will be a bit difficult for it to stand straight. So you may want to look for a way for the pin to stand straight while before soldering it or you could do what i did which is just i just solder it and i just bent the pin so that it would be at the correct position that i need them to be when putting on the charging module make sure that you have some spacing between the charging module and the speaker below i felt that this was important because well the speaker would be vibrating and we don't want the charging module to be vibrating as well once that you have the height that you need, solder the charging module and then cut the pins to length. Now we are at the last part. Depending on the battery that you have, you need to uh, find a way to secure it in place here at the back of this, this area right here. As you could see, the battery that I have is a bit longer, so it doesn't really fit into the position. You could get a smaller battery or another solution is that when you are installing the, the charging module, you could maybe bend it a bit so that it would move farther down. This is to give space to the battery. Now, as you could see, I am trying to figure out how long the wire should be so that they would reach the battery pins of the charging module. I secured the battery at the back with, with, with some scotch tape for now. I'll be fixing this later on. Uh, I just wanted to see if the, the unit is working. I'm checking all the connections if I have everything in place. And then you could open the unit uh, using the power switch at the lower right of the board. And as you can see, it's working great. The buttons are working. Up, down, left, right, and you could open an application or a game. I'm a bit bothered by the battery part. Um, if you remember, the, the pins for the ESP8266 are a bit longer on my end. And uh, they are jutting out quite a bit. And uh, since the, the battery is sitting on top of the pins, I am worried that the pins might puncture the battery here at the back. So my solution to this is I, I decided I would add double-sided tape to cover the pins. This double-sided tape would, of course, um, keep the battery in place. If you run into any problems, like, for example, the unit is not opening or um, something weird is happening, just double check your uh, your connections. 
now that you have a working ESB boy, the next thing to do is for us to calibrate the volume. Boot the ESB boy and then look for the sound test application. Music will play here and you could adjust the volume of the system using the variable resistor at the back. Just use a screwdriver, clockwise lowers down the volume, counterclockwise increases it. One important thing to note is that the ESP boy has two USB ports. One USB port is here, and this is the charging port. So as you could see, it's part of our charging module. And then the other one is this one, which is the USB port for our ESP8266. And we use this mainly for programming the, uh, the ESP boy. Uh, so there you have it. With that done, you already have a working ESP Boy uh, unit. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to send an email or ask at the ESP Boy website. All right, good luck and thank you.